Where where are you from? Um, California. But where were you born then? New Jersey. Oh. So what um are you are you black then? Yes, I'm I'm black and African American. Your race is African American? Right. Okay. Got it. Um, well, you're very articulate. Um, thank you. I think you, you certainly represent your race uh, very well. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, I had a lot of good role models in life. Yeah, obviously. Obviously you did. You must have gone to a pretty decent school. and um, You should be real proud of yourself. It's great. Yeah, MIT. MIT, is that right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you uh, did you start out like cleaning there or something, and then you know worked your way into the classroom, or how did that how did that work out? Um, I I applied from high school and got in. I was actually the first person in my high school to go to MIT. Wow! Congratulations. Thank you. Sort of like a prodigy um, <laughs> for your race. That's that's great. Well, there there were other black people there too. Okay. I mean, and, and not to, and I don't want that to sound racist at all. I mean, I have I have black friends, and you know, I there's only one race to me, and that's the human race, and we're all winners in that race, even women. So, okay. yeah, we. Uh, so, can can you tell me a little bit about uh, what brings you in today? Well. I've been having some trouble on the job. There have been situations where I've been feeling a lot of anxiety. Um, like one of the things I do at work is I give talks. I don't always feel like people take me seriously as a professional and an academic. Mm. Okay. What, what kind of work is it again? Um, I'm a clinical psychologist. Okay. Can you tell me about a, an example of when something like that might have happened? Well... A couple of months ago, for example, I was invited to give a talk um, for a symposium, and they had invited a lot of professionals to come and talk on different mental health issues, and um, I was invited to give a talk on personality disorders. So um, the, the venue was way out of town. It was someplace I had never been um, in the hills of Kentucky, and I drove up there, and when I arrived at the building, I got on the elevator. And there was a gentleman in the elevator with a bow tie and a woman who was one of the organizers of the event. And she um, looked at the man and said, oh, you must be one of our speakers. And then she just started to very animatedly talk to him and tell him how glad as she was that he was there and um and i just felt completely invisible in mm. in the elevator i mean i was all dressed up and i had my briefcase and i thought that i looked like i was ready to go and for some reason it was like she didn't even see me and as we're going up the elevator i was feeling more and more awkward because i realized at some point i'm gonna have to introduce myself to her and um stand up in front of the group and i just felt like I didn't belong there, and I just had to had to go in the bathroom for a few minutes and sort of pull it together. Hmm. Um, and and I just I don't know. I just it just kind of set the whole tone for me for the rest of the day. I just really felt like I needed to escape. So you had to go to the bathroom to collect yourself. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Is that code for it was that time of the month? <laughs> no, no. I just felt like I needed to get my head on straight. Huh, that's strange. Um, you know, did you was it just overwhelming? I mean, the professional world, I mean, can be very overwhelming, especially for women. And I just, you know, was it that? Was it just overwhelming um, because you just haven't been in that world before? I I give a lot of talks and I get good evaluations for them, so I think I know how to give a good talk. It's just I don't feel like, I don't know, maybe I feel like an imposter sometimes, like maybe I should be doing something else. Hmm. What else could you be doing? 
Well, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I really love what I do. Yeah. Um, I, but it's, it sounds like you're, you're trying to talk yourself out of this um, because you don't feel like you belong. Yeah, I think sometimes I feel like I don't belong. Sometimes I feel invisible, like people don't see me mm. for some reason, and I feel like I need to be seen, but maybe I'm afraid of being seen. It sounds like the, that motherly instinct take, taking over, that, that pull to go back home and, and be with your children um, and nurture them. Um, I wonder what you think about that. Well, I, you know, I was a stay-at-home mom for a number of years when my kids were small. Um, and then after probably the third one, I felt like I was ready to go back to work. And I feel like that's worked well for me to spend time with my kids on the weekends and in the evenings and then be at work during the day. Mm, okay. Yeah, so what? what's really the problem, though? I don't understand why that's that big of an issue. I mean, if you can't stand the heat, you know, you know, as a woman, stay out of the kitchen. Uh, so why is this any different? I don't know. I think, I don't know, I feel this has something to do with my race. I feel like I wonder if people accept me as a black woman and a professional and a scholar. Um, and, you know, and I, I'm a little overweight, so I understand what it means to be in a, in a, in a marginalized group. Um, and I have to deal with that as well. Um, but I just work through it. I work through it and, um, you know, I, I, and I generally come out on top. So. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I see some people like other professionals I know, and it seems like people just give them things just because they're white or because they're men and nobody's ever just like given me things. I felt mm. like I've had to fight for everything. That I have. Well, not scholarships, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh. that's, uh, yeah, and maybe it, I mean, maybe what you're seeing is, is, uh, like, like I said, it's, it, it has been, it's been a man's world, and, uh, maybe you're just trying to find your place in that. Um, I mean, what, what do you think you could do to, to maybe, um, ease your way into that world without, without causing too much of a, of a stir? Well, I don't know. I feel like that's what I've been doing, trying to find a place for myself without causing a stir. And and sometimes I feel like maybe I need to just break out from that and, mm. you know, ruffle some feathers sometimes and, and, and not be afraid to make people uncomfortable. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what that's like. I I, I would prefer you go into this and... You know, harness uh, harness those the strengths that you have as a woman um, to uh, uh, you know be gentle and, and soft spoken and and uh, who knows maybe something will open up um, and uh, you might be able to you know, work your way up a little bit as time goes by. Well, I think what I would really like is just some recognition and appreciation of all the work that I do. Hmm. Like a trophy? Or... Well, like like a raise or a promotion or tenure. Wow. That's asking a lot. It's, that takes a lot of hard work. Well, I mean, like in my department, um, it's been 107 years and they've never tenured um, in a minority woman. Is that right? And I'll be the first one if, if my tenure goes through. But I, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like they're just like looking for something wrong with me. Hmm. Yeah, maybe there's just a lot of people vying for the same position and they got to pick the right one. I mean, there's a lot of people who are very qualified for that position and maybe they're just trying to find the one who's the most qualified. But I think I am the most qualified. Well, then let's see where the chips fall. I, I mean, I like to think it's a fair process, but that's just not what I've seen in my life, you know? Life isn't fair, is it? I guess not.